welcome to How to Reage a Shield by The Shield Shop. This video is going to go over uh, the care and maintenance of a plastic dip shield. If your shield ends up looking like that, you could turn it into this. And all we're going to do is spruce up the paint and take that edge off. All right, so what we're going to need is safety equipment, glue, knives, our edge, plastic dip, and some measuring equipment. So if your shield is water damaged or squished, in this case the edge has been destroyed, um, either being squished in a car or a bit, or it doesn't really matter. Um, if it is damaged beyond repair for the game, you can fix your edge, simply slice in with a sharp knife, lift up until you see the gray foam. All of our shields are designed this way so that you have that separate gray foam underneath. And then use your serrated knife to roughly chop the edge off the shield. Be very careful as you will be cutting towards your own hand, so one must have space and be careful about that. Then just use a sander. In this case, we have um, a horizontal sander that we strap down, but you can use any kind of sander. And make it nice and smooth, as smooth as you possibly can. It does not have to be perfect. You will have glue going on top of it. Next, you want to make sure you have enough edge foam to do your shield. If you've ordered your shield through us, we of course will ask you to measure your shield edge beforehand and make sure that your edge width and your edge uh, length matches the outside of your shield. Next, you wanna put your gloves on, safety equipment, and we're gonna use our classic DAP uh, contact cement. We're gonna put that on here. I just use a piece of foam, but you can use a brush as well as your brush to put it on. You wanna make sure that you put the glue on both sides of your foam uh, and then let it get tacky for about five to 10 minutes. It really depends on the humidity and the heat in your area, but when you touch it with a non-gloved hand, it should be slightly sticky. Your fingers should come up a little bit. So you wanna make sure you put that glue on both sides. You also want a thin layer of glue. So you'll notice I use this foam sort of like a squeegee, which is why I suggested foam or like a foam brush, something you can push the glue with. We're gonna line this up where you wanna make sure that our edge is somewhere that you might have a hit with a sword because that's gonna be the split that you can see uh, in our foam. So that's why I lined it up to the slightly right of the top of the shield um, as if it had been hit with a sword and chopped there. Next, you're gonna trim it down to a small angle. I normally do a 45 degree angle, but it's really whatever is comfortable for you. I'm gonna match that angle to my other extra little piece of foam because I'm using two pieces here. Most shields do take two pieces of this edge foam, just so you know. And it is two pound polyethylene cross-linked if you wanna order it on your own and you don't wanna order it through us. All right, so at the very end, you wanna match your angles. So this can take a little bit. You wanna give a little extra room to make sure that you can trim it smaller. It's easier, of course, to cut off than it is to add or patch. Put some more glue on there, make it nice and tacky. I'm using a heat gun. You don't have to, you can use whatever you want or just let it dry. And look at that, it matches up. Next, you can just put in this tape and you wanna put tension on all four uh, corners, as it were, of the shield. You wanna have it on each seam. And then we will put tape, blue tape on each uh, edge piece all the way around so that it goes to the front and the back, just like that picture. I'll do it a couple times all the way around. All right, we're gonna come back to that the next day or in a couple hours once our DAP is dry and we'll be using E6000. Again, make sure you wear safety equipment. In this case, I have a thicker glove on. Um, this is very bad for you, so please make sure you have safety equipment on. And we'll be using E6000 to fill all those seams. I will do this on both sides. And then we use that same glue, E6000, to add rivets. Again, if you've ordered a re-edging kit through us, we will send you rivets. We'll send you extra rivets, they get lost. So those are just little fun foam pieces. And we did that same thing to the front and back. And so now you see what it looks like after its first layer of being refurbished. Before we plasti dip it, we're going to wash off any of the extra uh, dirt that you might see. So in this case, we're just using a uh, wet wipe, like your regular kids wet wipe, and then um, a paper towel to make it nice and dry. This helps the tape stay, but also you can already see that it's looking a little bit more uh, blingin, and that's just because it was covered in dust from being used. Next, we're gonna use that same painter's tape, and we're going to tape off all the edges here. We wanna actually not get right up to the edge. You can see that there's a small distance between the sculpture and the edge of the shield. We're just taping the sculpture off because what we want is our plastic dip to cover the outside edge of the shield and our brand new uh, re-edged portion. That way there will be no lip, there won't be anything for that shield uh, edge to rip off on and it will continue to just be able to be used. 
Obviously we're plastic dipping it. You're gonna need at least one can of spray and a little bit of that uh, paint on. So this is that paint on. You wanna be really liberal with the paint on because that is what keeps the outside edge uh, nice and firm and gives you more longevity on your shield. So basically you wanna do it so you can't see any of that foam underneath and alternating layers of paint and spray. After that's dry, obviously, we come back in and we get our nice spray painted layer. Don't bother taking that tape off, just leave it. Put a nice spray paint layer on there. And then once that's dry, this can take a couple days, by the way, guys, these steps. It all, again, it all depends on your humidity. We're gonna come in and we're gonna touch up and paint. So earlier I was just pointing out the uh, edge and how we have to go back around it. Luckily, the edges of most shields get grimy, so no matter the color of your shield, you can just start with black here and then uh, add a little bit of brown and you should be able to blend it all together. Even if your shield is blue, again, just start with black and brown and then maybe add a little blue touch up. We'll go over a color touch up in a second. So right now I've started that color touch up and what I'm doing is taking golds and pinks and reds and different combinations and lifting up every area with watery paint. Next we're gonna walk in here with some black and we're gonna make it a little bit more pop out on those shadows and then follow the same exact theme with a watery paint just kind of going over the edges. You'll notice on these leaves, anybody with leaves or feathers, if you want to lift the paint on your own shield, just use watery acrylic and then do a light tone on one half and a dark tone on the other half. Then on these uh, rivets here, we've got black rivets to uh, make it nice and aged. Just wipe that off with paper towels and then you're done. Boom. <laughs>